Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at some image timing tricks using Ripple Trim. All right, I've got lots of little tips in here uh, that makes working with images and image duration over a timeline very easy. You might use some of them, you might use all of them. I think it's just a good idea to at least have all of these as in your bag of tricks. The first one that's really easy to miss is the duration of still images, pictures, JPEGs, pings, that you're bringing into Premiere Pro. There's a default setting of five seconds. If you think five seconds is fine and that's what you work with, great. But what happens a lot is someone will import their five seconds and they think they have to change all of them, which can be a huge pain. If you, and if you forgot, you can delete what you just brought in and import them in again. So let me just show you that just to get that one out of the way. So in the edit menu on Windows, the Premiere Pro menu on the Mac, and I'm gonna keep going here for preferences a lot, so I'll just start saying preferences. If you go to timeline, you can see still image duration is five seconds, and you can change that to frames or seconds. If you change that after you, you brought the images in, it won't change those, it will change the next one. So like I said, if you brought them in and thought, eh, I wanted them all one second, delete, change, import, now they're all one second. But what if you have a bunch of images on the timeline already and you like the order of them? You can't do that because there's no way to keep the order you have in the timeline. Once you bring in the images, you're gonna have to drop them in manually. Uh, you can drop them in all at once, but the order is not up to you. Let's imagine you've worked on the order, but now you wanna change the whole duration. So let's just go look at the trimming tools and how they work. I've got a really simple one set up, and then once we understand this, I'll show you a whole timeline full of images. Okay, so here we've got a bunch of images from uh, Florida, and I'm going to trim this. And if I trim, let me trim on this side. If I trim this, I leave a hole. And if you don't know, some people will either delete that um, or move all of them down. And that's not the best way to work because that's a lot of manual work. It's much better in your tools, the ripple edit tool. It's the first one at the top if you click and hold you'll see a little orange tool, and now when you change that, everything else comes with it. What you might not know is that you can actually select multiple, and if you move them, they all ripple trim, but that can be a bit of a pain if you've got a lot of images. I wanna show you how we can use exact numerical values to move all that, okay. Now, when you are selecting these, you'll notice the trim window come up. And in the trim window, you've got buttons and you've got indicators. The indicators over here at the left show you how much you've shifted and the buttons will move these. So if I hit minus one, they've all been trimmed by minus one. And you can see minus one here. If I hit plus one, you'll see now it's at zero. And you might wonder, well, why doesn't that say plus one? Because I moved it plus one. The whole time you have a trim window session up, and this is created for, um, for professional editors who will use a lot of window trimming and keyboard shortcuts. When you're, when you're finessing a trim, sometimes you get yourself in a hole and, and you realize everything I've done while this window has been up, I don't want anymore. So there is, a keyboard shortcut, it's not set, you can set it, but there is a keyboard shortcut to revert every single thing that you did inside here, good or bad, you can just say, forget that I was in this window. See how the window has a blue line around it? That means you're in this trim window. If I click down here, I'm out of the trim window. It didn't save what I did, but you get the idea. If you wanted to change the keyboard shortcuts, if you search for revert, 
and scroll down, you'll see revert trim session and there's no shortcut for this. I never use this because I'm not a guy who uses that trim window, but like I said, a lot of professionals will use that window. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it at five seconds. So the, the import, I'm gonna bring in a whole bunch of images and by the way, these images are vertical, horizontal, they're a whole mess. And I'm gonna put them on my timeline and I'm gonna set them at one second and I'll show you how easy this is. So let me go to uh, my motion array photos and here's a folder full of photos. I'm just gonna drag this in. And if I open this up, you can see a whole whack of images here. And like I said, they're all high resolution and they're, they're shot with a camera. So sometimes they're shot portrait, sometimes landscape. I'm gonna create a new sequence and I'm just gonna create this as a uh, HD sequence. Of course, you could work with uh, 12 megapixel or, or larger 20 megapixel, 24 large images and 4K timeline. Um, just make sure sometimes Sometimes you're, if you've got a really underpowered computer, bringing in massive images, hundreds of massive images on a 4K timeline can be a little bit uh, slow. So I'm just gonna drag my people photos right into here. And there they show up. And I'm just gonna tab around and you can see they don't fit. So there's two ways to make these fit. Uh, one way is to apply an effect in the effects. I'll search for reframe. Now I've got them all selected in the timeline. You can apply an effect to anything that is selected. So I don't have to drag and drop these. So I'll double click on auto reframe and now they're reframed. But look at how much slower it, it is as it's calculating. I just went to the next image. It's still calculating. So it's this is analyzing the images, finding what is the subject, and there we go, that just changed. So it's, it's finding the subject and changing it. So this takes computing power. I hear my fans starting to, to get louder as this takes some time. So if you got 4K's timeline and multi-megapixel images and auto reframe, Woo, you better have a powerful computer. I'm here on my Dell 7770, so it's going to work fine. Now, even with this, it still doesn't get it perfect because some of these images are really, really tall and they won't fit. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try to find, oh, there we go. So here's an example of one. If I go to uh, my effects controls, you can see there's the auto reframe effect. And what you can do is you can reset this and put this down here. It doesn't really fit. Honestly, what I would do for, for an image like this, I hate black bars on the sides. You can fill those edges in in Photoshop in generative uh, um, fill so easy in Photoshop and it would look perfect. So. Let me just get out of that and show you the other way. So again, these are, I'm gonna take the effect off, right click, remove attributes, remove auto reframe, and we're back to giant images. The other way is to go to the properties, again, with all of these selected, and then choose fill. And now you can see the performance is much better because it's not analyzing it, but we still have this issue where some of the framing is not perfect. Again, because this is not analyzing it, it's just taking whatever size, horizontal or vertical, and fitting it in. Um, the old um, image size would actually give you black bars on either the top or the bottom. We don't want that. So auto reframe, you could do it that way, or you can do it this way, um, but you do have to move these around. Now, I still ha haven't ripple trimmed these. We'll get to that in a second. What I wanna show you is, I think this is a really easy way to go through all the photos and reframe them manually. It doesn't take that long. So the first thing I'm gonna do with this operation is go to my sequence menu and choose selection follows playhead. 
now whenever I'm going to another clip, it's not only showing me the clip in the program monitor, but it's selecting it, okay? Then, I'm gonna go back to the beginning, I'll make sure this button is on, Toggle Direct Manipulation. And you'll see that the frame is selected. If I'm using my scroll wheel on my mouse, and you can use a trackpad, I'm using the center mouse to move, and you can actually see the size of the photo. I like this because this gives me an idea of how, where I can move. Because you'll see some of these have a, they've been shot poorly, that a head has been cropped and you can't add the head. Again, you could probably go into Photoshop and do that. But I'm gonna use um, this method so I can see how much I've got. Okay, next up, <laughs> I keep telling you all these little things because they're really important. The next thing that's important is moving to the next clip. Now, up to this point, I've been using up and down arrows, but if you have this button selected, toggle direct, up and down is going to move the actual image itself. So I can't go to the next frame. So in the button editor, click in here. I'm gonna drag three of these. The first one is um, snap. The second one is uh, go to previous edit point. And the next one is go to next edit point. Hopefully we've got some room in there. Oh, we don't. There. Oh, no, it's over there. So I'm going to get rid of one of these. Um, let me get rid of the spacer and there we go. Okay. So snap means that when I am moving this around, it will snap. I think that's just better. That way you're not accidentally, if this is off, you could accidentally leave a little space there and it would show up. So when I've got snap, okay. So next previous snap, this zoom. <laughs> All of those things are set up. Now, when I go to the next, you can see it's set up. And here's what I mean. You can see that I've got more room at the top, not a lot, but I've got enough to reframe this better. Go to the next one. Of course, she needs to come down. And you just go through the images. I think this is fairly quick. Really just getting the ones that are the problem, obviously that one. So I like to fill the frame. I think filling the frame. Okay, here's an example of the head cut off. I can't get his head in, so I'm gonna to snap to the absolute top. Next, next, next. I think you get the idea. You can, and I, sometimes I jump too fast. You go through here and, and you can do this after you've done the, the uh, timing trick. Okay, so you get the idea. Now I've got all of these all of these images. Oh, it's just gonna drive me nuts. <laughs> okay, so I won't go looking over there anymore. Okay, so now you've got all of these in here. They're all five seconds long. They're all in the right position. So you put all the positions in the order of them and they're great, but the duration is wrong. Ugh, ooh, remember that what I showed you at the beginning? Now I'll select my ripple edit tool and select all of those edit points. And now when I choose minus five, I'm trimming every single one of those minus five. Now back in the trim preferences, I, I wanted to show you that you can change the large trim offset, just can't be as, as large as four seconds. And it's also important down here to make sure that this is turned off or else what I'm showing you won't work. Now you have to do that quite a few times to get four seconds out. So because of that, I like to use the numeric keypad. Now, if you're a typical MacBook Pro user, there's no numeric keypad, but you can actually buy uh, Apple compatible uh, numeric keypads. I'm just gonna show you that I can type the number in instead of having to use that plus pop, 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 pop. Now, the interesting thing about the, the numeric keypad is it counts backwards. 
So if I just type in four minus four, take minus four away, it'll be four frames. So it counts frames, seconds, minutes, hours. So if I wanna take four seconds out of every single one of these uh, images, then I type four with the period key in the numeric keypad. That's four seconds, enter, and everything will change. Watch this. Minus four period, enter, boom. Now every single one of those is one second long. And I could do that the other way. I could select all of these and go back plus four, period, boom. Now we're back to our other size. So having a numeric keypad, woo, is makes things so much faster. But at least that gives you some tips on how to, to change, and this works with anything. If these were video clips or titles or animations, anything, it's just stuff on the timeline. It just happens to work really well with images because there's no in and out point. If you're trying to extend all of these, and these are video clips, to five seconds, and one of your clips is only two seconds long, it ain't gonna work. It's gonna stop. Now, of course, you can start working with generative AI to extend some of that, but that's another idea. So there you go. I think there's a whole bunch of tips there that you may or may not use. Maybe one is good for you, uh, and you can find that useful. Especially what, like I said, when you find yourself in trouble that you've got this whole order of, of all of your images and maybe you're dropping in music and you want the music to be, you know, three minutes long and you're finding everything is just a little bit too longer. You can trim those one frame at a time until they fit. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, then awesome. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to look in my bag of tricks. I've had this one on the list for a long time and show you some very useful tools that you can use in Adobe Premiere Pro.